High in the mountains of Portugal's Algarve region, we find ourselves in what feels like a misty magic forest where ancient giants live. Giant cork trees, a form of oak which does indeed have magical properties. This tree, I believe it is 150 years old. Wow. That long? one over there, I believe it's four or 500 years old. Giuse Paolo is a businessman whose family has owned this hillside for centuries. How old will a tree be when you start taking the cork? Uh, maybe 40 years. You heard right, 40 years. There's a saying in Portugal that you plant cork trees for your grandchildren. So tell me how this works when you harvest cork. You make a uh, a cut, a straight cut, vertical, then you do it in the horizontal way. With a specially designed steel hatchet, cutters slit the bark. Between May and August, the bark is loose. So when it's pried up, it comes off, sometimes whole like a tube. Now here's where the magic comes in. The process doesn't kill the tree. By law, cork can only be harvested every nine years. This tree was stripped in 2010. See the zero? By 2019, the bark will be more than an inch thick again. In many parts of the country, the trees are farmed like orchards. Tourists can follow what's called the cork route. Portugal produces 65% of the world's supply. You would be right to say, ah, that's where corks come from. It exports a staggering 12 billion corks a year. You would also be right to say, ah, what about those plastic things and screw tops? Before the year 2000, nine out of every 10 wine bottles were sealed with a cork. Now it's down to around seven. We had the problem. The whole industry had the problem. Antonio Rios de Amarim runs Portugal's largest cork company, founded in 1870 by his great grandfather. They basically came out in the market saying that cork was a faulty product. Why? Because of a condition called cork taint, the musty off taste that can occur in wine. Although corks aren't the only cause. But talk about a wake-up call. Amarim alone has spent more than $300 million developing technology that has all but eliminated the problem. The company now makes stoppers out of cork at all price ranges, from two cents a piece, cheaper than screw tops or plastic, to the two dollar a piece ones that go into expensive wines. When they open a bottle of wine with cork, they know they are drinking a quality wine. When they are drinking a bottle of wine with a, with a, a, a plastic, they're not sure of what type of wine. If your bottle of wine has a cork in it, you're going to believe it's a better bottle of wine exactly. than if it's plastic or screw cap. Exactly. Top grade corks are still punched by hand. The human eye is still the best way to spot a reject. Women, we were told, are the best sorters. But technology and design are transforming an industry that heard its wake-up call like the alarm it was. Suddenly, cork and trendy are words being used in the same sentence. This was the, fir the, first, the first product that, that we did. Yes, it's a cork umbrella made out of cork sliced so thin it's flexible and can be sewn like fabric. Sandra Correa calls it Cork skin. You just, you'd never dream this was yeah. cork. Correa started her company, Pelcor, after the millennium when disappointing champagne sales left the family champagne cork business with a glut of raw material. 
we needed to do something with our cork. And, and it came to me and to my father, why we don't do something new, something that the world doesn't have. This does not look like cork. We wanted to make it more fashionable. And to make that, we want to reproduce the, the leather crocodile bags in cork. Sandra Correa now exports to the rest of Europe and to the United States, not just her line of fashion accessories, but something else as well. This is our baseball cap. A baseball cap. The message that cork is cool. And, uh, um, You've got to be kidding. To be, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> OK, here we go. <laughs> wow, perfect, <laughs> perfect. It feels good.